Thank you for joining us on this seventh Sunday of Easter. This is the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass at Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Omaha, Nebraska. Our celebrant is Father Dave Korth. We continue to practice physical distancing because of COVID-19 and will continue to do so for the time being. Until we can gather as a parish family again, we will celebrate virtually as a parish family with friends all around the world. In this time of uncertainty, we ask that you please consider making a contribution. Your kindness allows us to pay our staff and maintain our beautiful church. We encourage all parishioners to sign up for ACH. You can download the form right from our website, sacredheartchurchomaha.org. Many of you have continued to mail in your envelopes or made donations online. We are grateful. Again, download the ACH form or make an online donation right from our website, sacredheartchurchomaha.org. Please join us in I'm So Glad Jesus Lifted Me. Welcome to our celebration here at Sacred Heart Church for the seventh Sunday in Easter. Uh, we had Ascension already on Thursday. We're here in the state of Nebraska, so we, uh, we're going with the seventh Sunday of Easter. I'm so excited because the Sova twins are here, Joey and Jack, and uh, they're usually sitting right over there by the choir, but because it's safer, we've asked them to come over here. And so I usually walk by and give them a high five every Sunday. So I think I figured out a way I can still do that and social distance. So let's see if this will work. How about a noodle? A noodle one and boom. All right. <laughs> They are here. They're going to help us with uh, the ringing of the bells during our Gloria. But let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now as these, these baptismal waters come upon us, may we be recommit ourselves to uh, living out our Christian faith that we received at our baptism.
let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience as he promised until the end of the world his abiding presence among us who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Please join us in The Lord is My Light. first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, 
an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. So this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you give me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them. And they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me. Because they are yours. And everything of mine is yours. And everything of yours is mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
So our gospel passage this, this weekend uh, is taken from the same passage in John's gospel. Uh, it's called the Last Supper Discourse. And this is the third weekend in a row that we've heard this, the Last Supper Discourse. It started uh, two weekends ago when we heard uh, Jesus say, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. And then uh, we hear this weekend, the end of this, this uh, Last Supper discourse, it's a prayer that Jesus has to the Father. And I was just really struck by that uh, this week as I was praying over this text and, and I was thinking about, I wonder what it would be like so later on, after this passage here, there's, there's a little bit more. Um, it, it doesn't include the entire prayer that Jesus prays. And so what would it be like, God bless you, uh, what would it be like if, if we could, if I could witness a father saying that prayer that Jesus said to his father, a father saying that to his children, that's what I was trying to envision in my mind because I think it's pretty well known um, that, that women kind of have been leading the way spiritually, right? Um, just uh, there's, there's studies that have shown that uh, Mother's Day cards, if they, in a prison, if they set out piles of Mother's Day cards, they're all picked up and used. And on Father's Day, None. I think that is evidence, right? How it's, we need to encourage fathers to take a more active role in, in praying for their children and praying with their children. So I was thinking about that. And then I got to thinking, it's like, well, I did invite Joe to bring his boys here this weekend. So I put him on the spot when he came here to church uh, I asked him if he would do this. And so, Joe, can we witness you taking parts of this prayer that Jesus gives to the Father? Can I ask you to, to pray that prayer with your sons at this time? When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. I pray not only for them, but also for those who believe in Jesus through their word. Thank you, Joe. There were some really powerful words in that prayer uh, that if, if all fathers would, would just go to this, it's the 17th chapter of, of John's Gospel, and, and just maybe enter into that um, and see how you might be able to model yourself after that. And in the section that we had, it's all about Jesus wanting his disciples He's praying to the Father this great desire that they are with him and that connection is always there. That's the same prayer that he has for all of us as well. But for fathers then to go ahead and give that example also of that they, they desire to lay down their life for their children. And I know, Joe, you would do that. Without a doubt, I know you would do that. I know that you strive to be a man of the word of God yourself. You try to instill your children with that word. So that's why it wasn't a stretch for me to ask you to read this because I know that you already strive to do that. 
uh, it's my hope and it's my prayer that, that, that more, more people, women and men, will continue to strive to do this, to pass on this faith with their children, to take a more active role. After all, he said that uh, it's, it's his desire that it's not only, he's not only praying for, for them, but it's for all of those who will come to know the Father through their word. It, it speaks about how important it is to pass this on. That, that it's not just those early disciples, but they had to pass it on. And then the people that they passed it on to, they had to pass it on. All the way down to us. If we are going to continue to keep this faith alive and well, we have to see that it's our role now, all of us. Not just me, not just the people that wear crazy outfits and stand up in front of people, but it's all of us who are called to keep this faith alive and share it with others. So. Let us this week, as we continue to move closer to uh, the, the end of our Easter season, the great 50-day celebration of Pentecost, let us recognize that the birth of the church that happened at that very first Pentecost, it's up to us to keep it alive, to keep it going forward by doing our part in sharing the word with others. We stand as we bring our, as we uh, profess our faith together. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers in the form of petitions before our God. Our response is transform us, Lord. For those who are full of tears and cannot imagine being happy again, whose inner hurts have never yet healed, we pray for wholeness and for new life. We pray to the Lord. Transform us, Lord. For all members of the Sacred Heart community and beyond, that we may be witnesses of unity, generous love, and faithful discipleship, so that we are all able to spread this faith, we pray to the Lord. Transform us, Lord. For those in transition and moving to new life stages, especially recent graduates, we pray to the Lord. For those in our parish community who recently joined our church, that they may have the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit to continue on their journey of faith, we pray to the Lord. We pray for parents who are the first educators of their children, that they will always be able to, to spread the news, the good news of Jesus to their children. We pray to the Lord. Transform us. 
And now we lift up to God all those names listed in our bulletin and on our parish prayer line. We ask God's healing power to rest upon each of them and all those we carry in our hearts this day. We pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, it's for the, the Sacred Heart Parish family. And I think at this point in the seventh Sunday of Easter, I think it's safe to say that our parish family has extended throughout the airways. And so this is for all of you uh, uh, tuning in to us, uh, wa watching this, this Mass and praying along with us. For this we pray to the Lord. Transform us, Lord. Almighty God, we ask you to hear all the prayers we bring before you with faith and confidence. Continue to help us to, to say yes to the invitation you have for us to be dwelling with you, to go, grow deeper with you each and every day. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in Jesus Lives. Sometimes I can't believe it, all he sacrificed for me. And how he bled and suffered on the road to Calvary. And in his darkest hour, abandoned and betrayed, the end was near and still for me, he prayed. Say that in his last hour a darkness did descend. The earth shook, the rocks split, the dead rose up again. Jesus gave a great cry to his Father up above, and he gave his spirit up with all his love.
Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, by the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on a journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, in whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and George our Archbishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, inform my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, oops, sorry. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. And back by popular b- demand from Easter Sunday is Tony Holiday for our final hymn. Please join us in Go. Thank you for watching today. Please share the celebration with friends and family. Get parish updates and make a donation on our website, sacredheartchurchomaha.org. Didn't you all hear the choir in the last song? They said, go, go, (laughs) go spread the word, do your thing, keep that faith alive. My niece gave me this. I'm a runkle.